So, hello and welcome to this lesson in our study of optimization tool. So, this happens to be our third lesson. And in this video, we'll talk about the simplex method. So, we are still discussing the linear programming model and how to solve it. And we've already discussed the graphical approach. And you know, that one has a limitation. We can only use that one when our decision variables are two. When we have more than two, it fails. And that means we have to learn other approaches that can be used to solve the linear programming model. Okay. And one of them is a simplex method. It's an iterative process. So it's a popular algorithm for linear programming and it was invented by George Danzig. So these are some few points about the method. So it's a computational routine of repeating the procedure over and over until an optimal solution is obtained. Right? As a result of this, it is known as an iterative procedure because we repeat it until we obtain an optimal solution. And the method indicates when the optimal solution has been reached and thus the iteration can be terminated. So it's always um, it has a stopping criterion that helps us to know when to terminate the iteration. Okay, so the aim is to determine a solution which optimizes the objective function out of the infinite solutions lying within the feasible region, and the optimal solution either maximizes or minimizes some linear combinations of the variables. Okay. So, when you have an LP model and you want to solve it using the simplex method, the first thing you have to do is to write the LP model in standard form. Okay. So, as a result of that, we are going to discuss how to write LP model in standard form. And when you have an LP model, it is Either you have it in this form, thus you have less than or equal to, you have greater than or equal to or equal to. But in our case, you are going to consider when we have these two. So less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, okay. So writing LP model in standard form. So a linear program in which all the variables are non-negative and all the constraints are equalities so all the constraints are equalities is said to be in standard form okay and it says standard form is attained by adding slack variables to less than or equal to constraints so that means when you have less than or equal to constraint then we add slack variables and by subtracting surplus variables from greater than or equal to constraint so when you have greater than or equal to constraint then we subtract surplus variables okay so slack and surplus variables represent the difference between the left and right and um, right sides of the constraint and the slack and surplus variables have objective function coefficient equals to zero that means when you add them to the objective function the coefficient is always zero okay so we are going to illustrate this with examples so for example we have to write the following lp model in standard form okay it says maximize 5x1 plus 7x2 subject to these constraints here so you can see that here we have the less than or equal to right in our constraint okay so we want to change this to equality and since we have the less than or equal to constraint what we can do is to add slack variables okay so that means we'll be adding slack variables and we are writing it in standard form so it follows a certain format so be careful of how we write it okay right so this is going to be the lp model in standard form okay so you see we have how many constraints we have one two three so that means you are going to have three slacks okay because the first one is going to take one of them let's call it x1 
the second one will take s2 the third one will take s3 okay and note that this here is the non-negativity constraint okay so that means when you write our lp model in standard form you're going to get 5x1 plus 7x2 plus 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 because now we are seeing we are going to add slacks okay and we said that the slacks they have objective function coefficient equal to zero so that's the reason why you can see that we have zero attached to all of them okay all right then subject to so the first constraint was as first x1 less than or equal to six but now we have to add a slack variable to it and change the less than or equal to equality so there's it so now we have x1 plus s1 equals six okay then the second constraint will be 2x1 plus 3x2 and you know that it doesn't have x1 so that's the reason why we came to where there is s2 to write plus s2 equals 19 note that the format is very very important you don't have to write it anyhow okay and the third one is going to be x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 8 and now our non-negativity constraint will be x1 x2 but we have s1 s2 s3 they should be all be greater than or equal to zero so this is the standard form of this lp model okay so let's take a second example which has the greater than or equal to so it says minimize 5x1 plus 2x2 subject to 2x1 plus 5x2 greater than or equal to 10 4x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 10 x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 4 okay so we have to change the greater than or equal to to equal to okay and since this is greater than or equal to we do this by subtracting what surplus variables from our constraints okay and that will change the greater than or equal to to equal like equal to okay so there is how it will be so it will be minimized 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 0x1 0x2 0x3 remember we said both the surplus and slack variables have um, objective function coefficient of zero okay so now we have 2x1 plus 5x2 minus x1 equals 10 then 4x1 minus x2 minus x2 equals 10 and x1 plus x2 minus x3 equals 4 and now our non-negativity constraint to be x1 s2 s1 s2 s3 greater than or equal to zero so this is how we write our lp models in standard form okay All right and always that's the first thing for you to do when you are to using the simplex algorithm to um solve the lp model okay so after that um we are going to illustrate the method with these two examples okay we are going to solve problems involving um maximization and rate less than or equal to and the rates follow the same approach except that just one or two things that we change okay so this is a question one that we are going to solve it says maximize z equals 6s1 plus 8x2 subject to 30x1 plus so subject to this constraint here this is a question one we'll solve and this is a question two it says canon produces two types of cotton cloth cosa and sedex and so sedex is a heavier grade of cotton and as such requires 7.5 pounds of raw cotton per yard while Scusa requires 5 pounds of raw cotton per yard. A yard of Sedex requires 3.2 hours of processing time. And a yard of Kusa re requires 3.0 hours. And it says, although the demand for Kusa is practically unlimited, the maximum demand for Sedex is 510 yards per month. The manufacturer has 6,500 pounds of cotton and 3,000 hours of processing time available each month. The manufacturer makes a profit of 
$2.25 per yard of Coxa and $3.10 per yard of Sedex. The manufacturer wants to know how many yards of each type of clothes produce to maximize profit. So you have to formulate an LP model for this and solve using the simplex method and now help us to know each yard um the yard of each type of clue that the manufacturer has to produce okay so these are the two questions they are going to solve using the simplex method and after solving these questions trust me you are going to understand the method and understand it very very well because you're going to take our time to go through it okay so solution as i said always the first thing for you to do is to write the LP model in standard form, okay? So when you take question one, this was question one, this was the LP model, okay? So when you write it in standard form, by now you should know how to write LP models in standard form. We are going to get this, okay? So now it is going to be maximize 6x1 plus 8x2 plus 0x1 plus 0x2 subject to these constraints. I hope you get it. Okay, so after writing it in a standard form, what you should know is that the slack variables S1 and S2, we call them bases because you are going to use them to construct a table. And the reason why we call them bases is because a basis is a variable with a plus one coefficient and it exists just once in the whole system. So you can see that when you take this system, for instance, the coefficient of s1 here is 1 and it says it's just in what this place the coefficient of s2 here is 1 and it says it's just in this place okay and so it makes the slack variables basis we call them basis okay so using a simplex method to um, solve lp models the first thing that we do is to construct what we call the initial simplex tableau okay and it is of this form so the first column that you see is cb contains the contributions per units for the variables s1 and s2 so you can see here for this question our slack variables were just s1 and s2 so that's why we have them here then the variables that we had were s1 s2 s1 s2 right then we had the right hand side and this theta here, it has a significance. We are going to. We will tell you very soon. Okay. So, this is the format of the table. So, now we are going to fill the table. So, you can see that when we take our constraint, we have 30x1 plus 20x2 plus s1 equals 300. So, filling this, we are going to have for s1, we will have 30. 20 one zero the right hand side is 300 i hope you get it then we'll come to the second constraint so 5x1 plus 10x2 plus x2 equals 110 so we'll get five here 10 here zero here one here and 110 then the objective function is 6s1 plus 8x2 plus 0s1 plus 0s2 so we'll have 6 here, 8 here, 0 here, and 0 here. So, when it comes here, the coefficient of S1 in the objective function is what? 0. And that of S2 in the objective function is also what? 0. So, this is what we call the initial simplex tableau. And it is of this form, okay? So, very, very simple. We always get all these data using the model that we wrote in standard form. So, when we get here, we can then perform some operations to complete the table, okay? So, we have what we call ZJ, and ZJ is obtained by um, this formula, ZJ equals, so, summation of the CBs times AIJs, okay? When, so, for instance, if you want the value for the CG here, 
it will be 0 times 30 plus 0 times 5, which will give us 0. If you want the value for CJ here, it will be 0 times 20 plus 0 times 10, which will be 0. So here it will be 0 plus times 1 plus 0 times 0, which will be 0. And here will also be 0, using the same format, okay? Then when it comes here, it will be 0 times 300 plus 0 times 110, which will be 0. Then ZJ minus CJ minus ZJ will be 6 minus 0 is 6, 8 minus 0, 8, 0, 0, okay? So this is how we complete the table for the first iteration, okay? So when we get here, for a maximization problem, there is um, a stopping criteria, okay? And the stopping criteria is that when CJ minus ZJ, everything in there, when it is less than or equal to zero, then we have to terminate the iterative process. But we can see that, yes, this is satisfied. This is also satisfied. But here we have six and eight. That means that we still have to do some more iterations, okay? So some key things for you to note. The CB column contains the contributions per unit for the variables S1 and S2 in the objective function. So this column, I've explained that already. And the second column, the basis contains the variables in the solution, which are used to determine the total contribution in the initial solution, right? So the basis. So the initial solution for this iteration, the first iteration, is S1 is 0, S2 is 0, S1 is 300, S2 is 110, and Z is 0, okay? The reason why I saw it is because, you see, when it comes to the basis, okay, right? Yes, you're looking, we can only find S1 and S2 here. We don't have this, and we don't have this. So automatically, they are 0. And S1 here is the right-hand side, so it is 300, and the value for S2 in the first iteration corresponds to 110, and it's our Z which is zero okay so that happens to be the initial solution so i, I said that the stopping criteria is that z cg minus zg should all be less than or equal to zero but here we have eight here and we also have six here that means that we have to do some more iterations so in doing more some more iteration because it's a maximization problem we are going to choose the value which is high like which is the highest here okay and you can see here it is eight so that means in an s iteration you can see that um, when it takes um, when you talk about this column here the column here is x2 so this x2 is going to enter into the solution to replace one of the rows here either s1 or s2 so we have to we know that this one is going to enter right into the next iteration so we have to know which of them to take off. And that is when we use what we call the minimum ratio test. And that's what we are presenting by the theta here, the minimum ratio test. So to get a minimum ratio test, it is given by theta equals BG over AIG. OK, so with what we have here, it is going to be 300 over you can see that this is what is going in right and the corresponding value for it here is 20 so over 20 and that's going to give us fifteen and this will be one ten over ten right and that will give us eleven so you can see that when we compare the 15 and the 11. 11 is lower than 15, okay? So that means that this row is going to go out. So in our next iteration, that's the second iteration, we are going to take this one off and replace it with x2. That's what we want to do, okay? And you can see that we are taking this one off and this one is coming in. So you can see that the 10 here, in here happens to be the point where they intercept okay so we call the 10 the 
um, pivot element. Okay, actually, we call this one the key column, and we call this one the key row. And this thing here becomes what we call the pivot element. Okay, so the pivot element is very, very important. Okay, so now let's come here. So for the second iteration, I'm going to eliminate the second column and substitute it by x2 equals 8. And the reason why it is x2 equals 8 because the coefficient of x2 in the objective function is 8, if you remember. Then I say theta is the minimum ratio test. It helps us to determine which row to eliminate. And this is given by this formula. And it says when the value is negative, we ignore it. And we always eliminate the row of the smallest positive values. Okay, and that's what we just did. And the stopping criteria is given by this, as I've already said. And there's a formula for computing our ZG. Okay. So you could see that um, from our table here, this is going to be the values that we had in the first iteration. Okay. So that's what I've written here. But we said that 10 is a pivot element. So since 10 is a pivot element, what we do is that because it is going to go into the solution, okay, it will have to become a basis. And for it to become a basis, that means it has to have a plus one coefficient, okay. So we would have to, since we have 10 here, we have to divide this here by 10, okay. So this is our row one, this is our row two. So we will say that row two should be equal to one over 10 row two, okay. So Doing that, we get 5 over 10, which is 1 over 2, 10 over 10, which is 1, 0, 1 over 10, and 11. So when we do that, we are going to get this. Then, since 10 is also the pivot element, everything above it or beneath it has to be 0. Okay, so this one, we only have this thing, which is above it, and that has to also be 0. So we have to reduce that to 0. So... The only way for us to do that is to say row 1 is equal to row 1 minus 20 times row 2. Now this is row 1 and this is row 2. So when we do that, for instance, when it comes here, I'm going to get 30 minus 20 times half, which will be 30 minus 10, which will be 20. When it comes here, we'll have 20 minus half times um minus 20 times 1 which would be 0 okay so that's why we have 0 here when you perform this operation you're going to get 1 here minus 2 here 80 here and 11 here okay so the new row 1 like our new run will be old row 1 this then minus 20 times the old row 2 and that's going to give us this here so you can see that now you've been able to make the pivot element has a coefficient of what? Plus 1. And what is above it is also 0. So that means we can now draw our table for the second iteration. Okay. And we will find So this is our second iteration. So remember that we said that we're taking S2 off and replacing it with what? X2. Okay. So now we can fill this table with what we had here. So you can see we had 20 here, 0, 1, minus 2, right hand side is 18. We had half, 1, 0, 1 over 10, 11, right? And the objective function is always 6, because the coefficient of x1 is 6, that of x2 is 8, 0, 0, okay? So now we have to get our zgs. So, our ZG, okay, we have to get our, so S1, the coefficient of S1, the objective function is 0, that of S2 is 8, okay, so that's what we write there. So now to get our ZG, it will be 0, let me change my marker, so it will be 0 times 20 plus 8 times half. So, did it 0 times 20 plus 8 times half, which would be 4. So, that means you are going to get 4 here. 
this will be 0 times 0 plus 8 times 1 which will be 8 0 times 0 plus 8 times 0 and that will be 0 we get 0 times minus 2 plus 8 times 1 over 10 which will be 8 over 10 and here we get 0 plus 80 times 0 times 80 plus 8 times 11 which will be 88 right and 6 minus 4 will be 2 8 minus 8 0 0 minus 8 over 10 okay so we said we have a stopping criteria and that is for since we are maximizing the cj minus the zj should be less than or equal to zero you can see this is less than zero this is zero this is zero but this is this violate this okay so that means that we still have to do another iteration so to do another iteration we have to know which of the column will enter and which of the row will leave okay so since it's maximization problem we take the one with which is higher here and that is what two so that means this column is going to go in to the solution but you have to know which of them is going to leave okay and you can only know which of the row is going to leave by using a mean ratio test okay the minimum ratio test so um this is going to go into the solution okay so for here i'm going to get 80 over 20 so the right hand side over 20 since it's under x1 and that is going to give us 4 then this is going to be 11 over half which will give us 22 okay so that means that since this one here is the smallest okay it's smaller than what we have here that means that this row is going to go out for x1 to enter there okay all right so this is what we call the key column for this iteration the second iteration and it's a key row and it's where they intercept right um, this way they meet so that means here 20 is the pivot element okay so we can write whatever we have here in this augmented matrix here so now since 20 is the pivot element we have to make sure that it is one right because it's going to go into the basis and for it to be a basis it has to have a plus one coefficient okay so the only way to make it one is to divide row one by 20. so when we do that we are going to get this and the next thing that we have to make anything above it or beneath it zero but it's the only thing beneath it and it's one over two but it has to be zero and the only way to do that is to say root two is equal to so new root two is equal to the old root two minus 0 0.5 times row one so when you do that it's going to give you this one zero you can see now what is beneath it is zero okay so since we have everything that we want then we can send this one into our third iteration so this will be the third iteration so we are going to get one here zero here one over 20 here minus one over 10 and this is four so zero here one here minus one over 40 three over 20 and this is nine okay so this is the coefficient of x1 s2 and the rest they are always the same now we have to get our zgs okay okay so s1 in the objective function is six and s2 in the objective function is eight right so we also write that one here now we have to get our zgs okay so the zg for this entry for instance will be six times one plus eight times zero six times one plus eight times zero which will be six this will be six times zero plus eight times one which will be eight this will be six times one over twenty 
plus 8 times minus 1 over 40. Okay, so, and that will give us um, 0. No, that will give us 1 over 10. Sorry, 1 over 10. And 4, we have here to be 6 times minus 1 over 10 plus 8 times 3 over 20. And that will give us 3 over 5. What we have here will be 6 times 4 plus 8 times 9. And that will give us 96, right? So now let us do the CJ minus ZJ. Okay. So this is going to give us 0. 0. Minus 1 over 10. Minus 3 over 5. Which is the same as 6 over, minus 6 over 10. Okay. Then... We can see that when it comes to the CJ minus ZJ, now they are all less than or equal to what? Zero. This is zero. This is zero. This is less than zero. Less than zero. So that means the stopping criteria has been met. Okay. So we are not going to do any iteration again. We have obtained an optimal solution. So we have to write them out. So you can see that we have X1 here, right? So the value for X1 here will be what we can see here, the right hand side, 4. So that means x1 is equal to 4, and x2 here will be equal to 9. So x2 is equal to 9. And this 96 here will be our z. So z will be 96. That's the optimal. And since s1 and s2 are not found here, it means s1 is 0 and s2 is 0. So that will be our optimal solution. You see, since all our cj minus zj is less than 0, it means that the stopping criteria is met. So you can read our optimal solution as S1 equals 4, S2 equals 9, and Z is 96. And that's the solution to the problem using a simplex. And you see, it's very simple if you understand what you are doing. Okay. It's not difficult. So now the question 2. Which was like this. Now, Canon produces two types of cotton cloth, COSA and SEDEX. The SEDEX is a heavier grade of cotton and as such requires 7.5 pounds of raw cotton per yard, while COSA requires 5 pounds of raw cotton per yard. A yard of SEDEX requires 3.2 hours of processing time. A yard of COSA requires 3.0 hours. And since although the demand for COSA is practically unlimited, the maximum demand for SEDEX is 510 yards per month. You see, the manufacturer has 6,500 pounds of cotton and 3,000 hours of processing time available each hour or each month. The manufacturer makes a profit of $2.25 per yard of this and $3.10 per yard of SEDEX. Okay. So the manufacturer wants to know how many yards of each type of cloth to produce to maximize profit. And we have to solve this problem. Okay. So the first thing for us to do is to formulate an LP model. Okay. So in formulating the LP model, we can let X1 be equal to the number of yards of COSA to produce. Then S2 to be number of yards of ZX to produce. Okay. Right. So from the question, it said that because that requires what? 5 cotton per yard. ZX was 7.5. And the total number of cotton was 6,500. The processing time, because that requires 3 hours per yard and select was 3.2 the total was 300 hours and it said that the demand for causa was unlimited that means it's greater than or equal to zero and that of the sentence was limited to what 510 okay so that means from those information we can formulate this lp model from the question okay so this will be the LP model we can formulate from the question. So we are maximizing 2.25x1 plus 3.10x2 subject to 5x1 plus 7.5x2 
less than or equals 6,500 and the rest are king. And there's a the non-negativity constraint. So before we can use a simplest algorithm to solve this, we have to write it in standard form. So writing it in standard form gives us what we can see here. Right? And I hope by now you all know how to write it in standard form when you have an LP model. So for the first iteration, we are going to get so you know we just have to write our five here, seven point five here from this one zero zero. So we get three three point five zero one. You know, all this information can be obtained from our question. Everything here. So this is just the coefficient of x1 in the first constraint, x2 in the second constraint, and the rest are king. And these are the right hand sides. And these represent the coefficient of the basis s1, s2, s3 in the objective function. You can see that they are all zero. And the cg represents the coefficient of s1, s2, s1, s2, s3 in the objective function. That's what you can see here. So to get our zg, for this one, for instance, it will be this plus this plus this times this plus this times this, and that will be zero. And here it will be zero plus seven point five times zero plus three point two plus zero times one, which will be zero. So if you compute all of them, they will be zero. And to get the functional value at this iteration, it will be zero times six thousand five hundred plus zero times three thousand plus zero times five hundred and ten which will be zero and when you do zj minus zg you get what you can see here okay so you can see that the storing criteria has to be this and it's not much here because this is positive here which is 2.5 this is also 3.1 which is greater than or equal to zero so we have to take the largest one out of the two. So you can see that 3.10 is the largest. Okay, so we are going to take that one. And that one will have to go into the solution to replace one of the bases. And to know which of the bases should leave for X2 to enter, we'd have to use the minimum ratio test. Okay, and since this is the column which is entering, all right when it comes here to be the right hand side over what we have here so here to be 6500 over 7.5 which is giving us 866.67 and here to be 3000 over 3.2 which is 937.5 and here to be 510 over 1 which is 510 so we can see that this is the smallest right so that means this row will have to leave so that means s3 will have to leave for x2 to replace it okay so you can see that this s3 which is leaving and this s2 which is coming right this is where they meet so that means that this one here becomes the pivot element and this is the key column and is a key rule okay all right so we can write what we have here in the table in an augmented matrix form so that we perform our rule operations on it okay so you can see that this one is the pivot element and it already has a coefficient of one it's just one so that means we have to maintain it but we have to make sure everything beneath it all um, above it is zero so you can see we have 3.2 here 7.5 we have to make them zero and the only way to do that is to say row 2 is equal to row 2 minus 3.2 row 3 and row 1 is equal to 1 minus 7.5 row 3 okay and when we do this operations okay we are going to get this augmented matrix here and actually that's what we are going to use for our second iteration so with the second iteration 
we are going to get these things here because we get them from our metrics that we had. So 5010 minus 7.5 and everything with the right hand side. Okay, so you can see that we said S3 had to leave in the first iteration for S2 to enter. So S2 has entered now. And the coefficient of S2 in the objective function is 3.10. That's how you can find that one here. Okay. So the only thing for us to find is our ZGs. So the ZG at this point, for instance, is given by 0 times 5 plus 0 times 3 plus 3.1 times 0, which is 0. Then it will be 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0 plus 3.1 plus plus 3.1 times 1 right which would be 3.1 and that's how we get the rest okay it needs to be 0 times 3675 plus 0 times 1368 then plus 3.10 times 510 which will give us 1581 okay so the next thing is for us to do our zj minus cj and when you do we have 2.5 here zero and the rest okay so we can see that they are all satisfying this condition the exception of this portion so we still have to do another iteration okay but we know that now s1 will have to enter into the solution so we place one of the bases but which of them is leaving the only way for us to get that is to do the minimum ratio test okay so here to be the right hand side that is 2675 divided by what's five and that will give us 535 and here to be 1368 divided by three which will give us 456 and here to be 15 divided by zero which is undefined so we just replace it with a hash which is dash okay so we ask ourselves which of this is the smallest and you can see that, that is four five six okay so that means that s2 here will have to be the rule or the basis to leave for s1 to enter so you can see that this is what is leaving and it's what is entering there's a point where they meet so here three becomes the pivot element in the second iteration and you have to make sure it has a coefficient of one and everything beneath or above it is zero okay so we can write what we have here in the augmented matrix form to make the operation simple so this is a pivot element we have to make sure that it is one so the only way to do that is to say row two the old new row two is equal to the old row two times one over three okay and when we divide row three row two by three we are going to get this then you can see that this thing is beneath it it is zero fantastic that means we are going to maintain row three but with the row one we have five here and this five we want to make it zero so the only way to do that is to say that row one is equal to row one minus five row two okay and when we do that we are going to get this augmented matrix here okay let me bring it here and when we get this then that will enter into the solution for us to get our third iteration so with the third iteration we are going to get something of this form okay so we have the basis to be s1 x1 and x2 and you know the coefficient of x1 is 2.25 that of s2 is 3.1 that of s1 is 0 these ones we just got them from here was inside okay so the only thing for us to calculate is our zgs so the zg here for instance this 2.5 this is how we had it so it is 0 times 0 plus 2.5 times 1 plus 3.1 times 0 and now give us 2.5 so what we have here for instance is 0 times 0 plus 2.5 times 0 plus 3.1 times 1 and that is 3.1 so we do that throughout and we get 0 here 0 0.75 here, and 0 0.7 so when we do our subtraction 2.5 minus 2.5 is 0 3.1 minus 3.1 is 0 0 minus 0 0 everything 
Okay. So to get the right hand side, it is 0 times 395 plus 2.5 times 456 times m plus 3.1 times 14. Okay. That will give us 2607. So we can see that when it comes to our ZGs, our CJ minus ZG, they are all less than or equal to 0. Okay. So that means that the solution we have at this stage is the optimal solution. So we would have to terminate the iteration process okay so it says since all the cj minus zg are less than or equal to zero hence optimal solution is arrived with value of variables as so s1 is four five six and s2 is five ten okay so you can see that here our s1 here is four five six the corresponds what we have at the right hand side and our s2 is five ten okay and our S1 will be 395. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, this happens to be the optimal solution. So, in conclusion, we will tell the manufacturer to produce 456 yards of COSA and 510 yards of SEDEX. And the person does that, the maximum profit will be $2,607. Okay. So, this is how we use the simplex method to find the solution of an LP model. Okay, so probably in our next video we will talk about the simplex method again. But in this case, we are going to tackle when we have a minimization problem. So in this video, the two examples that we solved were all under maximization problem. So we would also deal with minimization problem in our next video. So thank you very much, and see you in the next video.